Hi, this is Kel McCutcheon, and you're watching Pasture and Up here on Facebook Live. Today we are joined by Joe, and we'll be listening to their show, Help Desk with Joe. This is show number 28 in episode 51 with our podcast series, and we are going live. This is Kel McCutcheon with the Pastor Turned Up Studio here in Spencer, West Virginia. You're listening to Help Desk with Joe. This is show number 28 in episode 51 with our podcast series. Make sure to tune in for more podcasts, information, and music. Thank you for tuning in. All right, Help Desk with Joe, and with me with, as always, Joe! We're back for another week! Hey, it's Wednesday, and it's Help Desk time, so I'm excited. Always a good day. Get myself arranged here. I forgot my chair. My arm prop. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, you know, show 28, you're closing in on 30. And this is a, a revamp from what we did a couple years ago. Mm -hmm. We had how many shows? Over uh, we, 50 some, right? Yeah, we had quite a few, yeah. So at least eight, seven, seven or eight years worth, maybe? Probably. There about. I don't know. I'm, I'm messing that up, I'm sure. <laughs> but a lot of years worth, and we changed the format to podcast, so closing in on 30. And as always, a and Digital Technologies here with Joe and Cena helping out the average consumer along with some tech professionals. And you guys do everything IT. And you've been had a lot of projects here with Patch lately. Yes, we have. And we made a big announcement last week uh, helping out the local school system, helping out parents, helping out students. You guys are setting up. Uh, tell you what, I don't know why I'm trying to do all the technical <laughs> jargon here. Give us a spiel on what, what all you got in the works. Okay, so last Friday we actually went live with site number one with... Yep. Uh, community-based uh, hotspot capability for students that in Roan County that if they decide to either distance learn or homeschool yep. due to COVID-19 that they can actually have the ability to have a spot where internet's available because I know in Roan County they are if you're wanting to have your student be able to do distance learning and you don't have home internet that's gonna be a big issue but if you yeah. do distance learning they're going the school's gonna offer you a laptop only for distance learning students so we're uh, A&M Digital Technologies and Patches partnering up here with the Parkersburg Area Community there Foundation. There you go. Yep, they stepped in. They're an entity uh, over towards Jackson County in that area, and they handle a regional area. But they helped us out with some grant money, and uh, we put in virtual high-speed wireless Internet for people to pull up and have their students download, upload, and check on their virtual work and be able to do their uh, Zoom calls or Teams calls or whatever the state's going to mandate. Uh, so important stuff. And you're getting, you're going out to AMA today to yes, do number, to, site number two. Yeah, to, site, to create site number two. So I worked on that yesterday and, and pretty yeah. much have everything almost ready to go on that. So, nice. Yeah, well, so we'll, as of by an end of business today, hopefully we'll have two sites up and going. And and literally uh, all the parents will be have to worry about now is once these sites go live is pulling pulling your yeah. child up into the parking lot yeah. and connecting to the Wi-Fi and boom they can complete their schoolwork and we also have uh, safety nets and features in built yeah. into where uh, the kid will make sure that they're doing their schoolwork and not sitting in the back seat of the car watching Netflix or pl playing right. online <laughs> yeah so, and that's an important part keeping the kids safe right uh, that's a big mantra for what we do at patch and uh, you you already had that in line when we talked about how this plan would work you had uh, the firewall and all that stuff that will automatically do that job. So I think that'll that'll help parents here in Roan County, at least from the ones I talked to, that'll alleviate a lot of their concerns. A, they'll be able to get to somewhere right. locally for them. Cause right. You're doing here in Spencer, uh, Ama, Newton, which are two of the farther parts of Southern Roan that has uh, lack of cell signal and lack of high speed internet access. Right. And then we'll have a fourth location that where we're not, we haven't secured, secured yet, but we'll have a fourth one as well. Um, but that's something that will alleviate those parents' uh, anxiety, right. nervousness, because that's an important part. How well, does my kid virtually learn? How can I do homeschooling as an option if I don't have high speed? high-speed internet right and, and at least now we're given the opportunity to be able to have that discussion right. where before it was I don't feel comfortable taking my sending my child to school but yet I have no means of yeah what options ha do I yeah have? yeah with with these alternative options at least this yeah. way those options are being able to be discussed and put on the table yeah so good stuff I think that that'll definitely uh, like I said alleviate a lot of concern and nervousness for parents they'll now have a viable option and say okay that's in place so if I do choose to go that route, I have some resources. Right. And free. Free to the community. Yes, so absolutely. Um, okay, so on with the Help Desk with Joe show. You have three updates for us this week and then uh, tip of the week. And it's an important tip of the week. Uh, 
a not standard procedure here, but you already told me what the tip of the week <laughs> is, uh, so that's different for me. Normally, it's a surprise, right? But uh, but that's okay. We'll get to it. So just be patient. Yeah, it's going to be a big one. Yeah, it's yeah, it's a relevant one. So yes, a scary one. Okay. All right. So tell us about Google Maps. They have an update that we need to know about, and you're the guy with the plan. Yeah. So Google Maps. If you have an Apple Watch, Google Maps is finally coming back to your devices. So Google Map is making its way back to Apple Watch, and this isn't something that's coming immediately. This yeah. is going to be rolled out over the next couple of weeks. Uh, Google says it's finally re-releasing -re a new version of its maps to the Apple's wearable. The app will allow you to get walking, cycling, and driving directions from your current location to your home, workplace, or other destinations you've saved ahead of time. And it will also work with public transit systems. Okay. So I didn't. I, I'm not an Apple user, so I didn't know that was a feature before, and I never really thought about having it on your watch. Um, does that seem? Do you think a lot of people use that? Apparently so. If if Google's willing to spend the money on it, I'm I'm assuming that a lot of people. Yeah, and that's true. And one of those they wouldn't do it if it wasn't needed, I guess. Right, and it's one of those, Dave. We're looking here from rural West Virginia, right, where right, right. where you know people are used to either using a, a physical GPS device right. or their cell phone. Yeah, and that's why I mean I use my phone, Google Maps a lot, uh, but I never thought about it on my watch. Yeah, I didn't either. And then when I, after I read that, I was like, oh, that would be so much easier, a lot more convenient. Yeah. Huh, interesting stuff. Did I guess, Kale, can you research real quick and see if it's on like the smart watches that are not Apple? Yeah, the Android watches, I think it it probably would be. Hmm. Okay, so is, uh, Apple right now re-releasing it, Google Maps on their watches. Right. What else goes with that? That, that just gives you the ability, they're bringing it back. They say when or anything like uh, that? Over the next couple of weeks. Okay, well that's not bad, so a pretty fast timeline. Yeah. All right, so Apple Watch wears. Get ready to be able to GPS from your watch. I yeah, guess. again, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Again, there you go. So if, I wonder how many people lost it. Were like, wait a minute, what happened? I can't figure out where to go for my watch. Yeah, it must be. It must have been pretty big if <laughs> if Google's uh, putting because you know Apple and Google haven't been known, ever known right, to right. be big partners anyway. So yeah. for one to actually say, yeah, here's our service on your device. This must be pretty big. Hmm. How, what was the duration of the not having it on your watch? I don't know. Let me look that up I'm real just quick. curious because, I mean, if it was like years or something that just happened over the couple months, I'm surely, surely it would take them a while to adapt it to a new platform, I'm assuming. But then again, technology is pretty amazing, so it's really hard to tell. Uh, but I, this is what blows me away. I have two people doing research right here, <laughs> and in this day and age, I mean, that's not unfathomable. But it's still pretty neat to sit here and say, we're doing a podcast, a Facebook Live, and uh, I want to say Soundgarden, but that's not it. SoundCloud. SoundCloud. <laughs> SoundCloud. All three <laughs> platforms, plus you guys are searching stuff. Right. Uh, all at the same time. And I, and I could really get my own phone out and do, I don't know, something. Play Candy Crush or whatever. That's a joke. I don't do Candy Crush. <laughs> I could do something with my phone, I'm sure. Right. I could navigate to somewhere. Okay, so uh, Apple... Uh, Google stopped supporting the Apple Watch in early 2017, and they never really gave oh, a reason. Okay, so that's like four years ago. So now it's coming back after four years. <clears throat> huh. All right. Well, that'll be good for Apple Watch users. I use my phone a lot in the car, like we used it yesterday, uh, to Google or map where we were going. And, and I used to see time. To, you know, okay, I'm going to take this trip. How long is it going to take me to get there? Right. So pretty prominent feature that I use quite a bit. Yeah, we use we use Waze, and what I love about oh, Waze I is like Waze. yeah, the community base where you know you yep. you know ahead of time. And honestly, if Cena and I are going to Charleston, if we're going to a place you know that we've been a thousand times before, I'll turn it on. I'll still use the directions part, just use for the traffic updates. Uh huh. It doesn't have anything to do with you speeding. No. <laughs> yeah, all right. So if you're not familiar with Waze, Waze, go ahead and explain Waze. Okay, so Waze is like a GPS on steroids. <laughs> yeah. Waze is a GPS app that is community-based. And when I say community-based, uh, you actually interact with other Waze users, and yep. you can let people know ahead of time, hey, there's construction, hey, there's police, hey, there's a car wreck, hey, there's a dead possum in the road. Yeah, that, debris in the road. I yes, love that. Yes. Yeah, I always find it funny is... The, the little icon that they use for the uh, animal on the road or on the side of the road, I always look at it and go, well, that, why does that look like a, gra a little, an old yeah. little grandma? And it's actually like a picture of a sheep. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, Kel, can you guess what my favorite part of Waze is? Yeah, the Cookie Monster. 
Yeah, I use the Cookie Monster voice. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's it. What's he say? Do you remember the fra phrase he uses? It ends with C is for cookie, <laughs> but uh, it'll say something. It'll say caution ahead, or you know, like after like a car on the side of the road. Right, right. Like and they'll say and C is for cookie. <laughs> so uh, the kids, they're growing up, so they don't get it as much. But right, I still get tickled by it. Yeah, I told Cena you can actually create your own voice log file. Oh, really? For ways, yeah. And I told Cena, my buddy Greg, I met. I like to mess with him all a lot. And I told her, I said, I'm going to create a voice file. I'm going to load it on his phone, and then <laughs> next time he gets on ways, it's just really going. Yeah, it's yeah, hard yeah. to where he'll end up. <laughs> nice. Well, if you haven't played with it, use the Cookie Monster voice. Okay. Sadie will love it. Yeah, and tell you how good Waze is. Waze, uh, originally based out of Israel, Google liked it so well they bought it out. So actually Waze is under the Google umbrella, but uh, Google liked it so well it's like, okay, yeah, we'll buy it make sure it's sustained, but you guys just keep doing what you're doing. And a lot of people don't realize that it's actually a Google product. Really? Yes. Based out of Israel. Yes. Now, last week we talked about TikTok being based out of China. Right. I wonder if uh, that'll be an issue with Waze with Israel getting. Well, since Google, well, since Google actually, it falls under the Google umbrella now. Google yeah, has yeah. a lot more control. And also, I, I follow up on the TikTok story. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh, this isn't it has anything to do with the stories, but since you brought up TikTok, <laughs> there was a seen us smacking both of us yeah. in the back of our head. Like, Boys, what are you doing? Get back on topic. Yeah, uh, but I like it. I'm with you. Where I was <laughs> Let's go. Where we was talking yesterday or last, or last week, week about, yeah. and you was and you was kind of on the yeah, uh, fence yeah. on whether TikTok was really as bad as what you say. It was discovered last week, and there was a new story posted yesterday that TikTok for about a year and a half was bypassing Google's terms of service to actually track you by your MAC address on your device. Oh, yeah. And, and for people who don't know what a MAC address is, that is the physical address of your phone or right. your uh, tablet or your computer. That address never changes. It goes with you unless you manually change it. Oh, yeah. And what the reason they was doing that is so they could monitor what you're doing and to help push particular advertising towards you. Oh, yeah. Well, I, every company does that. Zach and I joke about it often. We'll sit there and whatever you search on Amazon, pops up on your Facebook feed yes two seconds later yes and whatever you know like my Yahoo mail it'll pop up there as well as little ads on the sides so right I, I don't know I'm not a big uh, conspiracy theorist I, I just I mean they track everywhere we go anyway uh, with the phones and so forth I mean that's is it a big secret where I go right yeah, that's what I was laughing because someone's like they know where you're going I was like yeah yeah if they want to track me to work <laughs> and back home and to the soccer field and Walmart occasionally, then I guess that's important stuff on someone's radar. But realistically, for me in rural West Virginia, I'm not going anywhere that's uh, worthy. Right. But if someone wants to pay for it, have at it. Well, you know, I, I'm kind, I'm kind <laughs> of on on both sides of the fence on that. I can, you know, from the standpoint of me, like you know, browse on the internet, you shouldn't have all these extra eyes watching you, oh, which yeah. is kind, of, which is kind of creepy. That that's where it really gets is the kind of creeper factor. Yeah, yeah. But then on the flip side of the coin, I'm like you, you know. If somebody wants to hack my network and get on my security cameras and watch me work <laughs> oh, or, no. or whatever, it, it must be a slow day at so, work. Yeah, yeah. So here's the question. Every once in a while, do you do like a little dance or something just in case someone is watching? Oh, absolutely. Look at the camera and wink and be like, hey, yeah. I see you seeing me. And see yeah. to look at you and be like, Joe, what are you doing? Yeah, yeah. there are times. I, there, are, there have been times I walk by the camera and go, hi, Russia. <laughs> I agree with you there. If someone's spying on me, they're in for a big disappointing day because, yeah. uh, but uh, that's a, it's funny. We've had those conversations and, you know, and you get somebody to roll in and they'll be like, man, they're spying on everything you do. I was like, good. Can they start doing grocery shopping for me? Yeah. It's wearing me out. I don't, I don't like going to Walmart. Yeah. Yeah. Right come now. on, Amazon. Just, just send the package <laughs> of, of stuff. And I we'll... shouldn't have to click anything. You know what I'm buying. Yeah. <laughs> You know, I helped that at ten times, and you know how frequently I've been buying it. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. Well, although, now, although in their defense, they do have that subsi subscribe and save where they'll just automatically yeah, send you stuff. So, yeah, it's funny. That's that's uh, good stuff. But there's always there's different perspectives on everything. That's we talk about that, and people get worried, and um, you know, I'm just like, oh, you know, in rural West Virginia, thankfully, we don't have a lot of those concerns. But the tip of the week may change your perspective. Exactly. Okay, so on the story number two, uh, 
Toshiba, you have some news update about. I was struggling to read my writing. <laughs> Toshiba doesn't look like a word I recognize now for some reason, but Toshiba, you have an update about that? Yes, Toshiba, uh, they've always been known for laptops, copiers, printers, stuff like that. Mm-hmm. They Toshiba has officially uh, killed off their laptop business. Really? Yes. And I, I was actually shocked whenever I. Is that. What kind of laptop do, do you use? I use a Lenovo. Lenovo, okay. Yes. And that's but, what we use down there? Yeah. And, and for several years, I used to be a, a big seller of Toshiba's. I mean, I yeah. love them. And it was one of those, I never had a bad thing to say about Toshiba. They made great de- great devices. It was just, it got to a certain point where their price point just wasn't keeping up with everybody else. So we just kind of took them off of our yeah, yeah. radar. And apparently everybody else did too because oh, wow. Gizmodo reported that Toshiba yesterday sold quietly sold the remaining 19.9 percent of their stake in the Dynabook laptops to the company Sharp. Okay, I, I don't know that I've heard of Sharp necessarily, but oh yeah, you have Sharp Electronics, Sharp TVs. Ah yeah, TVs. Okay, huh? So do you think they'll the entity will still make Toshibas or? Uh, they're actually I, I looked into it a while back because I thought well. You know, whatever happened to Toshiba, and I went back on their website, and they had a few laptops. They had their Dynabook series, which is kind of like their little rugged book series. Right. And they're still around, but you only had like four options. So I would say Sharp's probably going to either revamp that or keep pushing. Yeah. What's this mean for current Toshiba owners? Anything? Anything change? If you're on in the market for a new Toshiba, uh, good luck. <laughs> yeah, just switch, switch to a different brand. <laughs> right, right. But if you already have one, parts or whatever service. Yeah, there. yeah, that shouldn't affect your warranty or anything. It, okay. it, only difference is you may be sending it to a different address if you have yeah. to send it in for for okay. warranties or repairs. And, and the sad part of it is uh, the sell-off of their last little stake of the laptop business ends their 35-year chapter, 35 year chapter of oh, wow. being... 35 years in, in the, the laptop business. Wow, okay. But they still had their copiers and printers <clears throat> yeah. and stuff like that. It's just... So, so you know, the nostalgia side of me is like, oh, that's kind of sad, you know, seeing... Yeah, 35 years. Yeah. I mean, that's that's a little older than than what I am. So, yeah. it, you know, basically it's been there all the whole time and all of a sudden it's gone. Well, the good news is if you have problems with your laptop or computer or whatever, Toshiba or not, just do what I do. Give it to Joe and Cena and they take care of it. Exactly. I don't even have to know the mailing address. I just got to know your address. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> <laughs> and sometimes I don't even have to know that because you come to me. So, right, right. So even easier. So there you go. Problem solved. If you have a Toshiba, don't sweat it. Just give it to Joe and Cena. They'll take care of it for you. Right. So, okay. All right. Uh, and then your third update is about Minecraft. Yes, and this is Dave, this is something that I know has been kind of, it always kind of a thorn in your side is video games. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this is actually going to be a piece of both, best of both worlds. This Ooh. is going to help you on the educational side, and this is going to help kids with uh, that play Minecraft. So Minecraft Education Edition is coming to Chromebooks. I think you mentioned this before, right? I don't know if I have or not. Something about Minecraft, maybe, or something about... Because we talked about video games. Yes, we did. We did talk about Minecraft Education Edition itself, I think. Yeah, I don't have it on my notes right away, so it might have been something else. But anyway, I remember us talking about video games, and we had a whole conversation. Oh, no, 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 no. That was the test for ADD, ADHD. That's right. There you go. Good call. Yep. All right. Good memory. All right. So anyway, back to Minecraft. Yes, so Minecraft Education Edition is coming to Chromebooks. Okay. What's that mean? So, uh, before... The announcement of Chrome, uh, uh, the availability on Chromebooks, it was only available on mobile devices, on Windows computers, stuff like that. So now, okay. if you have a Chromebook that you're going to be using for school, you actually have the ability ah. to use Minecraft Education Holy Edition. Holy cow, that's going to make some kids happy. Yes, because I know a lot of the kids like Minecraft. Kale, you're a bit, you were a Minecrafter. I don't know how big of a Minecrafter, but you did some Minecraft back in the day. How long ago was that? Mm-hmm. Like four or five years, maybe. Yeah, something like that. But you, how did you play it? Xbox. Xbox. Okay. So, and now there's an educational edition. Yeah, and the the to be able to access it, all you require is an Office 365 or an Education A3 or A5 license, and it's also meant to be more educational tool than a game with lessons focusing on math, science, language arts, history, and visual arts. Nice. Well, I know when Kale played it, and the girls got into it a little bit, they built a lot of stuff. Yes. So you had to 
resource metals woods I don't know Kel explain it a little bit if people aren't familiar with Minecraft how would you describe it to them uh, you just like the first thing you have to do is cut down trees get wood and then that's where you practically start so what's the aim of the game I mean do you I was going to say that's a lot of information on explaining <laughs> something you cut down trees and you build stuff well, now this is more of an well, no, Dave. This is more of an uh, answer than I got from my nephew about four years ago. Uh, he had a tablet and he was playing Minecraft. I said, "So, what's the point of this game?" And he said, "Watch." And he took TNT and blew up, started yeah. blowing up his livestock. I was like, "Okay, but what do you do with? Yeah. Well, you just blow stuff up." <laughs> yeah, well, that's, uh, I was gonna say from watching him play and the girls play, they would uh, build stuff because you could you mine wood, you mine rock or something, right? Yeah, you can. Like you can buy a bunch of stuff or tear up stuff, I guess. You don't buy stuff. You make My, stuff. Off that's what I mean. You mine it or you dig it or whatever. Yes. And you, then what do you do with it? What you gather all these... You make houses you, and stuff, right? I mean, yeah. Well, then say that. If, you, know, you, you can build houses. houses. You can build whatever you want. Okay, so what you got? What was the purpose, I guess? Just to build your little world or your community? It was only you by yourself, right? There's other players? Yeah, now they have realms where you can get on with like 10 other people. Ah, okay. Okay, so what happens when you go in these realms with 10 other people? Do you guys like co-op together to build something or do you just try to go in there and tear stuff up? I mean, what's what's the point? I haven't I haven't played in a realm. I just know that's new stuff. Okay. okay. So when you played it though, would you you build a house, right? Yeah. And I I want to say they had like zombies or something that uh creepers, yeah. Creepers, there you go. So you had to defend yourself. Did you have to go out and catch livestock, or what did you have to do on that end? Uh, you kill it, use that for food, and it boosts your health. Ah, that's right. So there are all these little caveats inside the game. So it's kind of like a, a simulator, kind of like SimCity or, or something similar to that, where you have to build your little area, and then you're always defending it from whatever may come? Yeah. Okay. Okay, so... Anyway, Minecraft educational then, and I can see where Minecraft in some capacity will teach you some of the basics. You know, you need wood to build stuff. You right. need uh, stone to build stuff or whatever. All right, he pulled up Minecraft education. And Jeez. it's easy. You just go to the site. This actually had, it had a garden in it, so you can farm now? Yeah, you just go to the site and... Uh, Are you playing it? Yeah. Okay. So now I'm, I'm watching him. So he's in a forest. He just jumped out of a tree. He landed very well. Yes, there's different. Uh, he's tearing down the tree. Different. Why is the tree not falling? He's kind of like chopped the bottom off. How yes. are you flying? This, this is, is a crazy game. That's what I was going to say. There's different modes. There's survival where you can't fly. There's a horse. And then there's creative where you can fly and do whatever you want. Okay. Now I do remember, Dave, when we helped with the coding class a few years ago yeah, when we had yeah. the Raspberry Pis, it came with a version of Minecraft and we was able to find the code that where the kids could type that line of code in and change their whole world to like an Egyptian oh, yeah. uh, pyramid. Watch well, he's got forest here, it looks like a dirt mountain, sand maybe. Yeah. There's a different like there's a tundra, there's a Huh. So a that, desert. I, that is gonna incorporate some uh, geology yeah, there's a to your left is like a little pyramid deal with a house. Is this the start of the game? Like that's already there. This is creative. Yeah, they have like huh. villages. Yeah, and stuff like that, that you can explore. So now he's going into. Uh, we need to figure out how to show this over on our Facebook that deal. But you're going into like a Egyptian tomb type deal where it has rooms and pillars and. Yeah. Cool. Okay. Oh, oh, and you just dug down and fell into a treasure chest. And there's some stuff you gathered up. Okay. Oh crap. There was a trap. <laughs> and now he's stuck down in the bottom. I don't know. Are you gathering up stuff or are you dying? I don't understand. You can See, that, that's stuff. the thing, Dave. I'm with you. I, this is one thing I, to this day, I still have no understanding on. Well, what I do like, though, is that it's all in blocks. So you can build. So it incorporates some STEM. There's right. engineering here. Like, uh, he can build. Yeah, he's got tons of resources now. So he can build stuff. And, and that aspect I did like my, when my kids played it, the fact that they could incorporate a little bit of that engineering, a little bit of that math. You know, if you're going to build a square, it's got to be 10 by 10 or whatever the case may be, they right. had to actually work through that. So right. The other part, like the, the creepers or whatever you had to defend from, 
that was kind of video gameish, but you still had to plan out how to build your defenses. Like right. you're gonna build your house, you gotta figure out how to make it to where you can get in and out, but yet build some defenses. So there's some creative thinking going on. Right. A little bit of that stuff. So and, that, and now that they're adding education to it, and from the article I read, it was funny that they said uh, if you look on the app stores, uh, there's a lot of one-star reviews for the Minecraft Education Edition because a lot of people don't read and yeah. don't pay attention, and they download Minecraft Education Edition thinking it's the regular Minecraft and find out uh, that it's only education, so then they get mad and go on yeah, the app store and leave a one-star review. review. Yeah. yeah. And that's like right now he's building a square house. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, it, there's educational opportunities built into this, which is nice. So that's good. Yeah. yeah, you can do mostly whatever you want, and then if you, like, place this, crap, <laughs> and you can go in here and you can make different stuff, but you have to, like, say, I put this in there, and I can make different stuff with that. So yeah. he's going through a menu option, and it's allowing him to craft something. Like, uh, But you gotta say, have, like that said, composter, torches, uh, sticks. Sticks, and then there's... Coal. and you can make a torch with that okay so stick and coal and you make a torch to have light okay yeah. so that's pretty neat stuff all right so minecraft educational edition if your child is into that which i know a lot of them are usually yeah. ages i don't know where it starts but it goes up to around 12 or so i would say to, about probably six seven eight uh, yeah, to 12 somewhere near they can actually incorporate some pretty neat stuff into the minecraft game game and uh you know start working on some of that stem learning a little bit of engineering a little bit of math and, and from making a torch out of a stick and coal that's a little bit of uh, intuitive thinking so. yeah and then also they've incorporated language arts and history and visual arts as well and i'm going to assume now this is pure speculation on my part probably the visual arts and history part like where he found that pyramid was roaming yeah. around in it that might be part of it but that's pure speculation on my part yes the tnt now he found tnt and he's gonna blow something up maybe you know how to make a blow? There you go. Okay, so it just blew a big hole in the ground. <laughs> okay, so Minecraft. All right, come making a return with an educational edition and uh, spicing it up for kids and parents. Yeah, so if you have a Microsoft 365 or an educational A3 or A5 license, this will be an option for you. Okay, awesome. All right, well, Kale, thanks for that tour. And uh, back to your old Minecraft. Do you miss your Minecraft days? Uh, I'm used to, like, controller. So it's weird playing on a mouse and keyboard. I was going to say, I could see that was he was getting a little into it rather quickly. Yeah, for, he knows just, all the buttons and routine. Yeah, and <laughs> instead of just showing us how it all yeah. works, all of a sudden he was back into yeah. back in the Minecraft world. Building stuff and blowing stuff up. Right. The story of every little boy. <laughs> exactly. I'm going to build it and then to set it on fire. <laughs> <laughs> Better go find somebody else's stuff to set on fire. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, on to my favorite part, and this is tip of the week, and this is good for uh, any, I would say any business, any business owner, any even us, a nonprofit organization has been hit by this. Yes. So, Joe, lay it out for us. Tip okay, of the week. Okay, so this week's tip of the week is unemployment fraud. This is an actual issue that uh, we uh, dealt with yesterday at our own office, and then after you and I talked before the show that you guys had this yeah, very I similar situation a, a non-profit patch we got hit by the same thing so what this is going on is is if you have a small business please uh, forward this message on to all of your uh, fellow cohorts yep. and uh, fellow small business owners and we actually made a post last night on our A&M Digital Technologies Facebook page so if you want to go back and find that and share that yep. out uh, we received an e uh, two letters in the mail yesterday and they was actually two different forms involving one person and it was through our local unemployment agency workforce of West Virginia so and you know dealing with the state you know you get sometimes you get letters for oh, stuff yeah. that you've actually signed up for or, or things you're working on from the weirdest offices oh yeah and from a year later yeah so yeah so we thought it might have been something like that because with COVID and all that paperwork we thought it might have had something to do with that so we got so seen opened it up and it was actually unemployment paperwork yeah. wanting to confirm that this person had worked for us back in January to February and that the reason they were no longer working is due to lack of work. So Cena fired you, didn't tell you, and was still making you work. And changed my name. And changed your name. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so it was really weird. We, so, uh, 
That the secret is out. Seeing if I heard you and you didn't know it, and there you go. Exactly. You're now an employee, Joe. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, nobody told me. You got notified by letter. Yeah. So apparently I've been volunteering for the last <laughs> <Yeah>. several months. <laughs> yeah. Okay, but back to all seriousness. So uh, this is serious, yeah. Yes, yeah, so so what had happened is this person followed a attempted to follow a claim through the state for unemployment, claim that they worked for us. And so the unemployment agency did their due diligence and mm-hmm. sent us the paperwork to fill out saying yes, to ve- just to verify that, yeah, this person worked for us, blah, blah, blah. We don't know the person. I mean, the paperwork had the person's name, the last four digits of their right. social security number, but Cena and I had never heard of this person, yeah. had never worked for us, well, obviously. And you're a small business of two of you. So exactly. Yeah, that's pretty easy to track. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and I looked at it and like, no, that's neither of our names, so... Yeah. Well, and that's Patch had a similar situation, but it was one of us. Like, we knew, you know, and that's, we were like, shoot, did one of us get fired and we didn't know it? What are we doing? We're still, we're, you know, but uh, it was that serious. Yeah, the person sitting there not, literally right next to you yeah. and you're going, did you quit? I uh, know. I, like, I don't even know how I filed for unemployment. What? Wait a minute. Yeah. I'm out. <laughs> but, uh, and it hit us uh, probably a month ago. And uh, it was just the same thing, a fraudulent claim on someone else's name. And you know we had Denise had to go through and take care of all that through uh, the workforce. Yeah, and actually, uh, after I made my post last night, I actually had a small business owner in the community comment and say, "Hey, they actually had a letter come to their house for them, very similar situation, yeah, yeah, yeah. saying that they was trying to file for unemployment." And I said, "Well, how did you find out that someone tried to file it as you?" They said, "Well, somebody made a mistake and actually put our physical, our correct home address." And it showed up at their house. Yeah. Well, this showed up at our business office. Trying to verify. So I, I don't know how that scam would work because it came to our business office with right. our name on it. Right. Do you know how that? How does it work? I don't know that. That's because you're right. It should go to somewhere else so they could fill out the paperwork, submit it, and it would show a different address. Right. Well, so from what I'm gathering, the way it works is. They're trying to hope for that they would just fly under the radar that either one you wouldn't get the letter or two you'd be a big enough company where you just yeah 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 out the door out the door and get it rid of it and what to do is they'll send that information but they'll actually link it to a legitimate bank account so then when they send the unemployment benefits via uh, uh, direct deposit right it goes somewhere else yeah that part might go somewhere else okay right because that's we were looking it came to our business address it had our name on it. Right. The address was ours. I don't know how they were going to change that, but uh, I don't know. Well, in the, a computer they, somewhere, it could probably be done. Well, they don't care about the business where it's going to. This is kind of just what they call fishing, a fishing expedition right, where right. they just send it all out and hopefully th- they'll get a bite somewhere. Yeah. So, you know, that's all they're basically looking for. But the, the bank account that they have a link to through the state is legitimate, so then they can get their money that way. So, huh. so when we received the letter... Uh, Cena tried to call the Charleston offices, the main headquarters, and due to COVID-19 and all that, it's been chaos down there, obviously. I mean, oh, yeah, it, yeah. It, it's no bones about it. I mean, they, these people have been working tirelessly days, weeks on end, trying to make sure that the people that legitimately file yeah. claims get their benefits that they deserve and then try to file, th- try to uh, weed through these knuckleheads that are trying to make a buck for not doing nothing. Yeah. Uh, so Cena tried to call the numbers, and either the voicemail boxes were full or the just phone rang literally forever. But luckily, we tracked down the number for our local workforce office. Cena called them yesterday, and they went above and hats off to our local Roan County Workforce West Virginia crew over there. Uh, they went above and beyond the call of duty to make sure this was taken care of. Cena called yesterday, and they said, yeah. And while she was on the phone, they, this person okay. was uh, making other calls and said, yeah, all you need to do is send in this email, this email address, and I will provide the email address so if anybody else runs into this issue, and they'll take care of it from there. So if you... Hold on, Kel, put this in the comments too. Yes. So start, get ready to type into our Facebook as a comment, and you can type an email in. Yeah, great, good call. Yeah, yeah. Because that way, it's always hard. I I struggle auditorially to listen to something and write it down, but if if you can just click it straight through the comments, ten times easier. Yeah, you and me both. So the email address is report unemployment fraud. And I'll give Kel a couple seconds to type that up. And Denise took care of our deal, so I'm, I'm sure she called the local office as well because she said done and done, take care of like 20 minutes later. Right. So it's report unemployment fraud at wv.gov. 
Okay, that's a pretty easy one. Report unemployment fraud at wv.gov, and it's linked in the comments here on our Facebook show. Right. And then if you're on our podcast, you just it, it'll, it'll, it, it it'll, it'll be in the show description. Okay, Joe will put it in the show description later, so that's good. Yeah, so uh, Cena, after I was talking with the local rep about this, and they said that since COVID hit, they have seen a huge spike. I mean, it's one of those things that's always kind of went on, yeah, yeah. but there's been a huge spike of this yeah. kind of nonsense. More people due to COVID. sitting at home with time on their hands. So, exactly. Hey, let's sit around and figure out how we can uh, get, get some something from. for nothing. Yeah. But, and if you're not local, I know that this podcast goes out all over the nation. If you're not local, then I'm sure each state has their own workforce. Entity. Unemployment agency, yeah. yes. So just track it backwards. You can do that. Yes, yeah, so I mean, this is something local that's lo- affecting us locally, but I guarantee you if it's affecting yeah, rural yeah. West Virginia, it's everywhere. Yeah. So if you're a small business owner in whatever state region you live in, and you get any type of paperwork like this, please contact your local unemployment agency and say, hey, this person claims they work for us. I've either never known the person or they never worked for me. Yeah. And or I'm they're sh- still working for us and they just haven't been fired or anything. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Denise is trying to get rid of me now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, so watch out for those schemes that are happening. Yeah, it, it was kind of scary. I mean, it was, from our part, it was kind of a minor annoyance. But yeah. then on the back end of things, it was kind of scary. It's like, okay. And then once I found out where someone actually received a letter for about themselves so then i'm thinking i didn't yeah. possible identity theft and that's really freaks me out yeah, yeah. so yeah it's kind of it's kind of scary on the, when you start looking at how big the snowball can get uh, yeah. just from a simple letter in the mail saying hey this person worked for you uh we just need you to confirm that they work for you yeah and that's it's crazy my uh work credit card for patch got hit this past week as well so it's it's been a rough uh couple weeks here patch also you saw that charge i made <laughs> <laughs> canceled and canceled Jeff. yeah that thousand dollar amazon charge i have no idea what you're talking about today <laughs> yeah and, it, and it's kind of crazy because we do our credit cards you know as a business credit card right but they get hit I, I don't say i wouldn't say often but probably i'm on my fourth one in 15 years right uh which you know i don't know they're doing their job right Immediately, as soon as it happens, it goes into the fraud bin. They call us and say, "Hey, did you do these charges? It's suspicious." And you know, we go through the whole the protocol, which is great. They protect us, right, right. Uh, but man, it's amazing. Four or five times, and you know, every couple of years, I get hit at least once, and I have to get a new card. Yeah, and I've been there with you, Dave. I, like I said, about four or five years, I'll, I'll get one card hit, and it's. Yep. And it's usually the weirdest places that you that you wouldn't think of to get hit. Now, I mean, it's not like I'm. Ordering this something from overseas that I've never yeah. shopped to before. I mean, sometimes these are sites that I've shopped at almost daily. Yeah. And and something goes sideways on their end, yeah. and boom, you're hit. Yeah. So that's it's interesting. But uh, locally, we're backed by Poca Valley Bank, our local bank, and they do a fantastic job for us. So super appreciative of our local entities here doing good work for us. So. See, the only issue I've had over the years is I... My card got hit one on one company that during a Black Friday sale. Yeah. Well, so my credit card company called and said, "Okay, we're seeing these charges," and it was literally it's like hundred ninety nine dollars, hundred ninety nine dollars. Then it started gradually going up in hundred dollar increments yeah. for gift cards to this website. I didn't get a gift card, Joe. What are you doing? Well, I didn't either. <laughs> You're ordering gift cards, and I'm yeah. not on your list. So now I'm offended. I call it. So literally, the the credit card company sent me a text message. So that's kind of a rude awakening when you wake up Saturday morning and you have eight text messages from your credit card company yeah, saying that, that's scary. Yeah. So and, and I looked at it and it said, "Did you make these charges?" No. So luckily, hats off to the credit card company yeah. for for taking care of it. They said no. Immediately as soon as I text no, I got a phone call. Okay, we're closing your account out, and they just went through the whole spiel. Yep. Six months later, down the road, I are, are I mean, shop on that same website like normal, and my order, my car gets declined. Oh. And I thought, okay, what's the deal? So I check with the credit card company. Everything's cool there, and the company says, well, we you filed a fraud claim against our company that your credit card got compromised. I said, yeah. Well. Those was for gift cards, and and we think and we want you to pay those. I said what? I, I, yes. And uh, the, so I said, I did not make those charges. Yeah. 
well, sir, you're going to have to pay for that. And I said, I am not paying for that. I did not make those charges. You need to talk to my credit card company. And the guy was a real jerk. He said, sir, if you don't pay those, you can no longer shop with our company. I said, well, buddy, I'm going to tell you right now, I don't want to shop with your company yeah, you anymore. Yeah, you just lost business. Yeah, and I will not shop with you all again. Yeah. And, I mean, this was a company I was doing business with weekly. And a couple of years, it's been about a year or so ago, they called They called back wanting my business. I told Sam, I said, I do not want to talk to them. Yep. They treated me like trash, and I will not. Yeah, yeah. Because, I mean, you got to know fraud's going to happen, and if you're on the other side of it, at least it got stopped. Yeah. There's and, probably and, saying, well, no, that's really that guy's trying to rob us. But And I'm really holding back my, my teeth right now to <laughs> not just call that company out and say, look, and, and state their name right now. I, uh, so to that company, you're welcome. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Uh, but okay. Well, tip of the week: be aware there is unemployment fraud going on, and it hits close to home here in Spencer, West Virginia. Yes, a small business, a nonprofit. We've both been hit by it, and of course, credit card fraud as well. Right. Keep, keep tabs on your stuff because it happens. It happens a lot. Yeah, and, and it was weird. Ours, I got pinged for like fourteen cents. And then they hit me with big charges. Okay, so that's how they start. Yeah. What that's what they do is they hit a very small amount because they, they know that if you, if I get your credit card, first thing I do is hit with a thousand dollar charge. Yeah. Boom, it's going to be denied off. immediately. Yeah. But okay, let's let's hit it with a small charge. And I'm surprised it was even as small as fourteen cents because usually it it's like weird. a dollar or two. Yeah, yeah, it was weird because that's she's like fourteen cents. The lady that called and I was like. No, I, you know, what can you buy for 14 cents? Exactly. But well, no. that's usually just the, the tester to test the water. Okay, is this credit yeah. card good and, and all that? Yeah. And then it's like, okay, boom, 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 boom. Oh, yeah, then it was four or five in a row, big ones. Yeah. Okay. All right, well, great show, Joe. This was uh, show 28, so plugging right along, even through all the COVID stuff, you did remote shows, which we really appreciate. If anybody has any questions on that, so Google Maps for the watch, the Toshiba computer, so... Don't fret. Joe and Cena can still fix your computer. And then, of course, the Minecraft educational update. And tip of the week, watch out for that unemployment fraud. You know, and as we were talking, we added in the credit card fraud. You're welcome. Yes. <laughs> uh, so if anybody needs to get a hold of you, Joe, how do they do that? You can give us a call at our office at 304-927-3588. Check out our website at amdigitaltechnologies.com or check us out on YouTube, Facebook, and Twitter at amdigitaltech for all that. And be sure to subscribe to the podcast, Help Desk with Joe and Dave. Please leave us a five-star review. We are literally everywhere. You can't avoid yeah, yeah. us. Uh, we are on Google Play, Apple Podcasts, and Spotify find anywhere else you can find your fine favorite podcast nice and that's that's a big part of that is you know taking care of people helping folks out locally and now that, that you're helping people out all over the place all across the nation with your podcast stuff so good talk joe we really appreciate it and we'll be back next wednesday we're closing in on 30 shows yes we're going to do something big i don't know what although it's kind of hard to top last week we we d- finally dunked something <laughs> in the water it took us 20 some yeah. episodes to finally get to something to dunk in water i like so. it we didn't even get in trouble so exactly <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, Kale, take us on out of here. And everybody, thanks for joining us. This is Kale, and you've been listening to Help Desk with Joe with Past Turned Up. Stay tuned in for more podcasts, music, news, updates from our Patch students, Patch Community, and Trojan First. This concludes our Facebook broadcast. You've been watching Help Desk with Joe. We'll be back with more shows. Make sure you tune in and join us next time.